Friday night. I was here, and because they said it was a ladies' function, I stayed in my office, although I heard everything. And it was a mighty time. It was a glorious time. It was a powerful time. Hallelujah. And while I was there, while I was there, the Spirit of God gave me the topic. He says, tell them when trouble comes. When trouble comes. I want you to finish the sentence. Finish the sentence for yourself. When trouble comes, turn to God. When trouble comes, picnic shot fits you. Lord of mercy. For those of you who understand the Jamaican thing. When trouble comes, we should not falter or fail or cower. Here is a scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 6 to 7. I prefer if you listen to it. Just listen to it. I won't be long. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 to verse 7 says, At present, you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. Paul says, this is no accident. It happens to prove your faith which is infinitely more valuable than gold. I want to read it again. Paul, uh, Peter speaking rather, says, at present, you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. Remember what a trial is. It's nothing that you have done to cause the thing to happen, but it happened. A temptation is when you are drawn away because of your lust and entice, right? Yes. But a trial just happened. You didn't do anything to cause it. P Peter says, this is no accident. It happens to prove your faith, which is infinitely more valuable than gold. And maybe your trial today is a financial trial. Maybe your trial today is a health trial. Maybe your trial is a minor trial. Maybe your trial is a major trial. I am not so sure what your trial is, but the Lord says this is no accident. Ultimately, God is in control. Has a bad event in your life turned out to be the best thing? That could ever happen to you? Listen to the question that I'm asking today. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, visiting friends, has a bad event in your life turned out to be the best thing that could ever happen to you? Rick Warren has said, God is an expert at bringing good out of bad. God is an expert at bringing out good out of bad. Believe, do believe, he says, do believe that God is still in control. I do believe. Do you believe? God is still in control. He is in control of your life. He is in control of my life. Is in control of this church, is in control of this country, is in control of the world. ISIS is not in control. Jesus Christ is in control. Let me tell you a story. It happened in 1910, long time ago. In the south, the farmers used to cultivate cotton. And a weevil called the bull weevil came and destroyed all the cotton farms. The farmers were devastated. They were losing money. They wondered what they would do. It was a devastation. All the cottons were destroyed by this weevil. And you can just imagine how they felt. Where is the God that they were praying to? Huh? Many of them were Christians. 
And it so happened that as a result of what the bow weevil did, they diversified their farms. They planted peanuts and other crops. And they were so grateful for the bow weevil that they built a statue in honor of the bow weevil because the change came because of a weevil. The change they thought came to kill them was the change that came to move them into heights that they have never seen before. Will you give the Lord some praise? I said God could have kept Paul out of prison. Paul was placed in prison in Philippi. And God, our God, the mighty warrior, could have kept him out of prison. But you know what? There was somebody in prison who needed to hear the salvation. Who needed to hear the word of salvation. There was a jailer, the Philippian jailer, who was to be converted. No, no, nobody wants to go to jail. Brethren, I don't want to go there. I pray to the Lord. I do everything that I can to stay out of jail. Are you with me? Not a good place. I tell my students that. Stay far from it. But God would allow Paul to go to jail for a change that was going to break through. And many would be blessed as a result of this change. Are you with me? Yes. All right. What about Jesus? Didn't he go to the cross? Yes. That looked like it was disaster. In fact, Peter took Jesus aside and said, no. No, my Lord. You are not going on that cross. Jesus had to turn back and rebuke Peter. Because the cross is not a sign of failure. It is a sign of victory. Shall we praise the Lord? Come on, give the Lord some praise. You might be carrying some cross here today. You might be going through some trial here today. It has not come to kill you. Because when Jesus Christ came down from the cross, he was able to save the whole world of sin, shame, and disgrace. That's why we're here today. Because of that change. Give the Lord some praise. In God's hands, intended evil becomes eventual good. I say in God's hands, intended evil becomes eventual good. Joseph said, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. You meant it for evil, but God who can see beyond, well, all, that all of us can see, some of us can't see well. Even with glasses, we're still in our 2020. So we need God to see beyond our 2020 vision. Amen? Amen? Oftentimes we worry and we fret and we cry and we beg and we carry on because we don't like the circumstance in which we are. Listen to me. God is in control. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery because of jealousy. And God allowed it. That was not nice. They threw, they threw him in a pit. But God allowed it. So has to preserve the very brothers who sold him into slavery. My God. Sometimes some things are going on. And the very person who sell you into slavery, it is the same person you are going to come back to redeem and to help. Understand God. Know how God works. He is in control. I say, I got this word as the ladies tarried out here and as they prayed. They weren't expeditious Friday night. I can tell you that. They tarried. 
Come on, give the Lord some praise now. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I say, God can make the pit becomes your palace. God can move you from the manger to the mansion. I don't know what you're going through and why God sent you this morning. But I got this word Friday evening and I wrote it down. And I printed my sermon and I left it on my desk. And I'm here today to share with you that whatever you are going through, God understands. He is in control. He is leading the way. And what you don't see now, you will see in time. For God is going to work it out. The Apostle Paul writes, he says, Five times I receive at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. How many times? He was beaten 39 times, five times. Do you know the cat and nine tail? Those whips were terrible, brethren. This is Paul, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, a man who is bilingual. At one time, a member of the Jewish Supreme Court of Appeal, the Sanhedrin. This is Paul being flogged shamelessly. And he says, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys. In danger from rivers. Dangers from robbers. Dangers from my own people. Dangers from the Gentiles. Danger in the city. Danger in the wilderness. Danger at sea. Danger from false brothers in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst, often without food and in cold and exposure. Paul said, I've been there. I've done that. I've been there. I've done that. And I have not given up. You should not give up either. Press along, saints. I am determined. I am determined. I am determined. I said, when I read the biography of the Apostle Paul, it gives me perspective. Because sometimes we Christians, we are whiners. We cry over every little thing. Oh my God, Sister, Sister Louis sent me an email recently. I don't know if some of you got it, where um, ISIS took over the largest Christian city in Iraq. And you know what they do? You know what ISIS do? And the world is asking us to pray for our brothers and sisters because those people are brutal. They are deadly. And in the face of this kind of brutality, we Christians have petty issues. <clears throat> huh? Come on. I'm glad if you're on fasting today with us. Because we need to fast for them. We need to fast for ourselves. And we need to see the bigger picture. It's not about Pastor Thomas. It is not even about first you'll be. It is about Jesus. Jesus Christ died for his church. Oh, glory. Paul says, five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day, I was adrift at sea. He didn't know if he would live. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers. Danger from robbers. Danger from my own people. Danger from Gentiles. Danger in the city. Danger in the wilderness. Danger at sea. Danger from false brothers. In toil and hardship. Through many a sleepless night. In danger, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold, sleeping in the exposure. Paul faced much 
for this gospel, so should you. So will I. So will you. Come on, give the Lord some praise. When bad things happen, can God use them to accomplish his good? Today, we affirm that God can work through our suffering to accomplish his purposes in our lives. Because as I said to you before, ultimately, he is in control. Job showed that God can glorify himself in times of testing. Are you with me, church? I said, Job demonstrates to us that God can bring glory to his name even when we are being tested. Because sometimes when we are tested, we feel like we are going to die. We only like the nice times, the great times, the feast times. We don't want a thing to happen to us. Now, how are you going to grow in Jesus? How are you going to see the power of God? Huh? You see, Job had some great theological discussions about why evil happened. But Job did not question God. He trusted God. In the end, God restored Job's health, his wealth, and his prosperity. Let me read you the scripture. The Lord gave Job twice. At the end, at the end, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Come on, give the Lord some praise. And as I wrap this up, all of us, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes, we are cast down, but not destroyed. Because we are always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For the Bible says, for our light affliction, our light trial, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There are some eternal things happening right now in your life. Come on, give the Lord some praise for that. Give him some praise. So I say to you, when you're going through your trial, don't allow bitterness to overcome you. Hello? Don't let the bad circumstances make you bitter. Are you with me? Bitterness destroys people physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Can I complete the word from the Lord to you today? Are you hearing it? The Lord says bitterness must not fill your heart when you're going through hard times. Don't curse God and die. Trust him. Sometimes it is hard, you know. Hello? Sometimes you're going through some things and it's hard to trust God. Sometimes you feel like God won't love you anymore. Sometimes you don't believe that your pastor loves you anymore. Or your husband. Or your wife. Or your children. Come on, brethren. Have you, have you been there? That there's nobody there for you? And you feel bitter. You say, look how I'm helping my family. And none of them even called me on my birthday. Lord have mercy. Come on, man. Come on. Look how much money I've sent to Jamaica and the Caribbean. And not one of them called me on my birthday. Am I not mother? Am I not father? My God. And we feel bitter. We are mad with them and we don't even tell them. They call us and we don't even want to answer the phone. Some children, you help them as a teacher. 
They come hungry and you feed them. And they go away with a bad idea of your intent. You still have to love them. Are you with me? Oh Lord. We do not serve men, we serve God, man. Amen? So, let me conclude by saying this. If you are going through some issue, if you are going through some issues, they could affect you physically by creating chemical imbalances in your body. If doctors can't find your complaints, my brother or sister, ask yourself, are you, am I bitter? about something or someone if you are mad about what has happened to you in the past or present your immune system that is supposed to protect you from disease and infection can become weakened and you become vulnerable to diseases are you with me church we can't allow what you are going through to hurt us to the point where we can't trust God if you have issues and you fail to forgive yourself, if you fail to forgive others, soon your facial features will, refle will reflect your inner distress. I can tell what's in your heart just by looking at your face. It comes right out. So if you are going through issues, and you fail to take them to the Lord in prayer, then depression, stress, and hatred can cover you. Church of the living God, are you with me? God uses incredibly bad situations to his glory. We don't have to allow them to destroy us. On a personal note, I have seen some people who have been through deep sickness or trouble and they lose their ability to love again. They stop loving themselves. They stop loving God. They stop loving others. They give up totally. They begin to question their relationship with God or whether or not God loves them. So as you face your bad situations, as you face your trials, look for the good that is coming. Are you with me, church? Yes. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. It is the word of the Lord. Come, will you worship him? Amen. So never hurt the Holy Spirit. He is, remember, the personal pledge of your eventual full redemption. Let there be no more resentment, no more anger, or temper, no more violent self-assertiveness, no more slander and no more malicious remarks. Be kind to each other, be understanding, be as ready to forgive others as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Will you worship the Lord? And so my friends, the Lord says to tell you, when you are faced with uncertain circumstances. When you find yourself in bitter situations, remember what the bow weevil did in 1910. By destroying the cotton, peanuts and other things were able to come to the fore. By destroying cotton, much more were cultivated. Remember how God used Paul's imprisonment. Remember how God used Jesus' crucifixion. Remember how God used Joseph and the Apostle Paul. It is the word of the Lord to you today. Will you worship the Lord? Will you worship him? Will you worship him?
So talk to the Lord right now, right where you are. Bow your heads. But whatever you are going through, God say, I have noticed. This is not an accident. Trust me. I will bring glory to my name because you are my child. Jesus died for the church. And upon this rock, I will build my church, Jesus declared. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So now as you are going through your trial, personal or otherwise, say to God, God, I am before thee right now. From this blackness, from this pain, bring glory to your name. From this loneliness of my heart and spirit. From this inner pain I feel. This rejection. This frustration. This anxiety. Lord, bring glory to your name. And release your goodness upon me. For I'm your child. In the name of the Father. Of the Son. And Holy Ghost. And God's people say.